Hi, welcome to day eight of National Poetry Month. I'm Josh Campo, your Teen Services Librarian at the Pontiac Public Library. And today I'm gonna to read you a poem by Elizabeth Bishop. Now Elizabeth Bishop is a more recent author of some of the ones I've been reading to you. She was born in uh, the early 1900s and only passed away in 1979. She was a very important and influential American poet from last century. And she also wrote a lot of short stories. This particular poem has a very prosy style. I mean, it's written like a story. And it's called In the Waiting Room. In Worcester, Massachusetts, I went with Aunt Consuela to keep her dentist's appointment and sat and waited for her in the dentist's waiting room. It was winter. It got dark early. The waiting room was full of grown-up people. Arctics and overcoats, lamps and magazines. My aunt was inside what seemed like a long time. And while I waited, I read the National Geographic. I could read and carefully studied the photos. The inside of a volcano, black and full of ashes. Then it was spilling over in rivulets of fire. Osa and Martin Johnson, dressed in riding breeches, laced boots, and pipe helmets. A dead man slung on a pole. Long pig, the caption said. Babies with pointed heads, wound round and round with string. Black naked women with necks wound round and round with wire, like the necks of light bulbs. Their breasts were horrifying. I read it right straight through. I was too shy to stop. And then I looked at the cover, the yellow margins, the date. Suddenly from inside came an, oh, of pain. Aunt Consuelo's voice, not very loud or long. I wasn't at all surprised, even though I knew she was a foolish, timid woman. I might have been embarrassed, but I wasn't. What took me completely by surprise was that it was me my voice in my mouth. Without thinking at all, I was my foolish aunt. I, we were falling, falling. Our eyes glued to the cover of the National Geographic, February 1918. I said to myself, three days and you'll be seven years old. I was saying it to stop the sensation of falling off the round turning world into cold blue black space. But I felt you are an I, you are an Elizabeth, you are one of them. Why should you be one too? I scarcely dared to look to see what it was I was. I gave a sidelong glance. I couldn't look any higher at shadowy gray knees, trousers and skirts and boots and different pairs of hands lying under the lamps. I knew that nothing stranger had ever happened, that nothing stranger could ever happen. Why should I be my aunt or me or anyone? What similarities, boots, hands, the family voice I felt in my throat, or even the National Geographic and those awful hanging breasts held us all together, or made us all just one. How? I didn't know any word for it. How unlikely. How had I come to be here? like them, and over here a cry of pain that could have got loud and worse, but hadn't. The waiting room was bright and too hot. It was sliding beneath a big black wave. 
another, and another. Then I was back in it. The war was on outside in Worcester, Massachusetts, where night and slush and cold. And it was still the 5th of February, 1918.